Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I am in Lightroom Classic and I'll be editing, that's uh, actually not entirely true. Uh, I'm not really gonna actually edit the photo. I'm gonna talk about the color tools uh, in this video. So I've been asked a few times by a few different people to explain the difference between some of the color tools in Lightroom. And that's what I'll be doing in this video as I work on a landscape. So this is what the landscape looks like. Technically, uh, I did a few basic things in basic. So it started like that, and it's currently like that. I did not touch temperature or tint. I did adjust contrast, highlights, and shadows, and that's it. And so when you think about color tools in Lightroom, there may be a number of things that come to mind. Temperature and tint, that impacts color. Uh, saturation and vibrance down here, that impacts color. You have the ability to create masks and adjust color. Uh, and then, oops, uh, also you have the ability to come into tools like uh, Tone Curve and adjust color, right? So. I'm not going to cover any of those in this video. What I am going to cover is what I consider the three major color tools and walk through the differences between them. And that is going to be color mixer, color grading, and calibration. Uh, all three fabulous tools, incredibly powerful. I love them and I use them all the time. And I love using color and enhancing and adjusting color in my photos. And these are the three tools that I do my primary work with. Now, keep in mind, there are, there are different needs that are fulfilled by each of these tools, but the real power comes in kind of using them together as long as you're kind of gentle with it, because it is easy to go over the top because there's so many tools. In fact, if you added up every slider in Lightroom that impacted uh, color, there would be dozens of them across multiple tools. But like I said, we're going to focus on these three key ones. So we're going to start with Color Mixer. Now, before I do that, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, I've got a free Lightroom editing guide available on my website. There's a link down below. 17 pages of tips, tricks, ideas, insights, things like that to help you get the most out of Lightroom Classic. And that's what we're doing. Now, in this uh, particular tool, Color Mixer, there's really two different components of it. There's Mixer and Point Color. There's a nice distinction between those, and they're both very powerful. Now, this has historically been known, the mixer part has historically been known as HSL or hue, saturation, and luminance. You can see that here. And as the name implies, it allows you to, in any of these eight colors that it identifies, to adjust the hue, saturation, or luminance. Hue is like the shade or the, the flavor of that color. Uh, saturation is the intensity or amount. And luminance is the, the brightness value, right? So you can brighten or darken that color. And this is a great tool. I use it a lot. But it's not the best tool. It is just a, a good tool, uh, in my opinion. I'm a little bit biased here. Uh, but I, I like it, and it's definitely useful, and it's very important to understand how this works. So uh, it's, it's a key slider a movement for any of these, uh, these sliders, right? So the thing is, you've got these eight colors. You don't really have any impact or any ability to control what that uh, color is or what that means to Lightroom. Lightroom is going to say, okay, well, you want to play with the red. It's going to identify what it thinks is red and make those adjustments for hue, saturation, or luminance. So if you take saturation, for example, if you drag that to the right for red, you can see I'm getting these weird things in the sky. Well, I never even saw red there. I wouldn't have used red. I'd use orange, of course. There's a lot of orange. You can see that. I start dragging that, and that orange gets really intense. Now, I don't go to 90, right? I don't recommend that. But you can see there's a lot of orange in the sky, but there's also a fair amount of orange in these trees. But there's also a lot of yellow in the trees, and so you might would come in and say, well, maybe I just want to impact the yellow. And going to 100 on yellow, doesn't look that bad, actually. It's bringing up some nice yellow in the trees, a little bit in the clouds, and things like that. But the thing is, this is Lightroom identifying what it perceives as that color and adjusting it based on how far you slide this slider. So it's useful, but it's not the most useful thing, in my opinion. The, the better version, of my opinion, uh, in my opinion, in Color Mixer is going over to Point Color because it gives you the ability to be a bit more precise and targeted. So if you were in HSL and you just drag the blue saturation to 100, you're seeing a lot of blue happen. I mean, even this light blue down here is getting impacted. That's getting really impacted. You're seeing some stuff down here and all that. But what point color does, and it's very accurately named, you point at a color and it'll grab that color and allow you to make really more fine-tuned adjustments to it. So for me, the difference here is control. And that's what I think this, uh, why I like point color so much. I use it so much. You just grab this eyedropper and you come in and grab, let's say, this orange in the cloud. And you can see you've got this color chart here. And then you can, based on these sliders down here, you can move the dots around as well. 
I'm not going to be going into a deep dive on any one of these tools to be clear. I'm just going to point out what they do at a high level and the differences between them. I should point that out. Um, so uh, you do have the ability to come in here and adjust the hue, right? I can make it more red or I can make it more green. Green looks really bad. Uh, saturation. I can increase the saturation or I can decrease the saturation. And of course, I can adjust the luminance value, right? So brighter or darker for that color. But if you notice, as I start dragging the saturation to the right, it's not impacting as much of the trees as it did when I was just doing orange in the mixer component. And I have the ability to be really targeted here. But what's even better, I think, is that point color is also available in masks. Now, I'm not going to get into masking in this video, but I do it in really every one of my edits. But point color being available in masks is a huge deal uh, because Otherwise, these are global edits, right? Color mixer is impacting the entire photo. Um, it's just that the mixer is eight different color channels, if you will, that it's identified and that what it perceives to be in that color. Whereas point color, you're a little bit more targeted because you get to pick out and identify that specific color. The, you can also come in with these uh, eyedroppers and get another one. So I can come in and grab this little kind of greenish here and you'll see the magnifying glass, and it gets this weird kind of pukish green, which I don't like. So maybe I want to make that a little bit more yellow. So I start dragging that over to the right. But it's also going to shift some of the colors here because some of that color that I identified, which is this dot, is uh, showing up in these other colors. So you got to be careful and you got to be gentle. But again, I think you have the ability here to come in and really be targeted and customize in terms of how you want to adjust colors. So keep in mind, Color Mixer for me is all about color channels or color ranges and being able to pick those and be flexible with the hue, saturation, and luminance within each. Now, the second tool I'm going to talk about is color grading, and I love this. And these used, used to be called split toning, where it was just highlights and shadows, but now it's got midtones as well. And color grading for me is about tonal values, right? Color Mixer is about color values or color channels and picking those and adjusting those. Color grading is about tonal values, so shadows, midtones, and highlights, and adjusting the colors or adding colors within those tonal values. So it doesn't separate the photo by color, it separates it by light. And so that's the difference between color mixer and color grading. Now with color grading a photo like this, I would go into the highlights. By the way, these three dots represent all three of the tonal areas, or you can click on these individually to get into the individual color channels or tonal values, I should say. And that's kind of the way I prefer to do it. So a photo like this, I might just drag this, make it a little bit more orange, and maybe then drag a little bit of saturation. Note that I'm just in the highlights. So anything in a tonal value that's considered a highlight by Lightroom will get impacted. Uh, then maybe I come into shadows, and let's say I want to do something maybe a little bit more in the blues, for example, just to cool that off and do a little bit of that color contrast, then I can apply that just to the shadows. So it's not going to be adding blue to anything like up here, for example, because that's not in the shadows, right? So again, this separates it by tonal value, which gives you a lot of control on the different tones in the, uh, in the image. And if you think about it, all the photographs, it's just a collection of lights. This makes a lot of sense. Uh, but again, the power is really using these together. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. I'm resetting all those. So these are each of the different tonal values, but then this one over here is actually global. And so this is impacting the entire photo on top of what you may have already done in the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So I think you got to be careful and you want to be kind of measured with how you use these. But again, color mixer, all about color channels or color ranges and color grading is all about tonal values, the, the different light values and applying specific color looks or color grades to those. Okay, and now we're jumping into calibration, and this is my favorite tool. I absolutely adore this tool, and it comes at color from a completely different kind of point of view, right? So again, color mixer, all about those color ranges or color values. Color grading, all about the light values. Well, over here in calibration, it's dealing with colors at the pixel level, so it's really pixel values and the distribution of the RGB or red, green, and blue values within each pixel. So for example, what I normally do is start with blue primarily and uh, primary, and I'll just drag the saturation to the right. And as I do that, what's happening is it's not making the photo blue. I'm dragging blue saturation all the way to 100, and it's not making the photo blue. And that's not, it's, you know, it's not temperature. It's not a blue saturation for the blues in the image. It's saturating the blue values within each pixel. And there's R, G, and B in every pixel. So what happens is you drag the blue primary, 
and the blue value in every pixel is getting more saturated. So it's going to make all the colors get a little bit more saturated, but not more blue. I hope that makes sense. But if you look at that, it gives you a nice pop of color. There it is before, and there it is now. Now, of course, 100 is too much, right, for this photo and probably a lot of photos. But there I am at 50, and that looks pretty good. And then hue, of course, is changing the hue of that particular blue pixel or blue value in every single pixel. So if I drag it to the right, I don't want to do that. If I drag it to the left, I get this really nice kind of orange look. And that's how people go about getting the orange and teal look. So if I go like that, that's orange and teal, right? It's, it's way overdone, but that's how people are getting that orange and teal look that you might see in you know, various uh, photos, like a lot of cityscapes and, and stuff. And I, I do that a lot as well. But that's a way to go about it. But there you go. Slight shift to the left with the blue hue and a, sh a slight shift to the right with the blue saturation. I got a pretty nice color look here. If you look at the before, there it is a bit more muted. And the after, there it is. Nice little pop of color. And all I did is just move two sliders. So it's a really nice way to color grade your photo, not to be confused with color grading tool. Um, and the same thing applies here with the green and red. So if you move the saturation slider for green, you're increasing the saturation of the green values in every pixel or desaturating and the same thing with the hue here, right? So you're changing the green hue in every single pixel. And then of course, same for red, uh, all the way to the right with red. And if you go to the, the hue, you can, you can come up with some really interesting color combinations here, but some really powerful and beautiful, I think, color looks because you're dealing with the color uh, hue and saturation in every single pixel. So it's a different approach. And then you have the ability here to tint the shadows as well, which might, in some situations like this one, work pretty well overall, just give you a little bit of that magenta tint in the shadows. So calibration on this photo has taken the photo from that to that, and I use the blue and I use the shadows. Now, here's where I talked about the power of the tools kind of coming together is when you unite them, because uh, adjusting color across an entire photo can be uh, achieved nicely by using all three of these tools. Now, I don't recommend going high or heavy handed with a lot of different color tools, but let's say I did this calibration and I like it. But remember, you get kind of that teal look when you start moving this hue to the left, right? I like what it does to the oranges, makes them a little bit more red, but you notice this blue is getting kind of closer to the teal. Well, this is where using these tools together allows you to really get a lot of fine grain control. So in this case, I'm gonna come into Color Mixer and I'm gonna get point color, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the eyedropper and I'm gonna grab that blue boom and what i've done is it's figured out where that blue is now i'm just going to shift the hue black uh, back to kind of that blue that i had before which is more of a natural kind of sky blue as opposed to that tealish blue you can see what's happening there but maybe i think it's a little too saturated pull that down and maybe i want it a little bit darker to create a little bit more contrast something like that now i need to be careful because you want to be careful around these edges that you don't get these weird let me show you if i go too high on luminance you get these weird kind of contrast uh, between the colors. So you want to be careful, but you have the ability to really come in and make some nice, interesting color shifts without um, having to be kind of stuck with what may happen in another tool. And so I like to do go and make these adjustments and then come back with point color and make some refinement. So here I'm going to go into this one and I like that color look a lot, but it's a little too much. So I'm going to pull that saturation down just a little bit. And now I've tamed that a little bit. And now I'm going to go do the same for these trees where I'm going to come in and grab that color and pull that saturation down just a little bit and maybe actually brighten it here because I want to bring those up a little bit. And so you can start having these nice, interesting color combinations that allow you to get a lot of control over the overall look in your photo. And speaking of the overall look in the photo, I might actually want to shift the hue of some of these colors to make it a little bit more red and a little bit less saturated. So maybe something uh, like that's a little bit more realistic. The point is you have the ability to come back and kind of customize what you've done to other colors by coming in with point color at the end. And that's something I find myself doing quite a bit. And then if you wanted to wrap it up with a little bit of color grading, maybe you give an overall global impact of color with a tiny bit of orange just applied liberally and globally or across the image gives it a nice little pop and bring up the luminance as well of that orange just to brighten it a little bit. And that has a nice little impact on the overall final look. So before and after, and that's really the difference between these three major color tools. Color Mixer really focused on color ranges and color values and allowing you to adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of each one. 
color grading, identifying different tonal values, so shadows, midtones, and highlights, and allowing you to adjust the colors within those tonal values. In the calibration, adjusting and impacting the color values in each of the pixels, and that would be the R, the G, and the B, the red, the green, and the blue values within each pixel. Overall, it gives you a lot of control and a lot of power over the color in your images, and you can take something that was, frankly, a gorgeous sunset and turn it into something a bit more vibrant and color corrected or color adjusted to suit your taste based on whatever kind of creative vision you may have. And this is not a full edit. I need to go refine some of this. Uh, but the bottom line is these three different color tools give you a lot of control to be able to be precise and targeted with your edits and to come in and really achieve your creative vision for a photo and do whatever it is you want to do to the colors so that you can have final uh, ultimate control over it. And it's because you're impacting things in three different ways, right? The color value, the light value, and then also the pixel value. That's how I look at these three color tools, how I use them together, and what I consider to be the major differences between them. Hope it helps, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas as well. Check out my ebook if you'd like down below. It is free. And if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll be back soon. And until next time, my friends, you guys take care and adios.